waiting for a long time for this uh, latest final rule to come out, and it did finally come out um, October 6th, and that is the modification to meaningful use in 2015, uh, uh, the final rule, and I'm going to speak to the specifications relating to eligible providers. Meaningful use also applies to hospitals, but we're going to, for the purpose of this, uh, this presentation, I'm going to focus on the eligible providers. Uh, this rule actually will be effective December 15th. Uh, right now, so they sort of combined the uh, modifications to 2015 and 2017, and also the specifications for meaningful use stage three into this one big federal register, 800 page document. <laughs> and so folks are, uh, I have a link in the presentation if you would like to read through Meaningful Use Stage 3 and make comments as providers who are going to have to face it, uh, please do so. Um, and you can do that online. It has to be received by December 15th. So uh, each time they come out with these things, uh, the Regional Extension Center, Rhode Island Quality Institute, and I have been there for almost five years, we make comments as well on behalf of our providers. And when we get to a particular measure, I'll, I'll tell you one comment I made that they didn't, they listened to, but they didn't change. <laughs> um, so this latest modification to Meaningful Use Stage 2, which is really what they are calling it, it really it streamlines the program. It removes uh, what they say redundant, duplicative, and topped out measures. Changes the HR reporting period to a 90-day period, which we were all really waiting for. Couldn't believe they waited until October 6th. It's like, come on. Um, and they removed the terminology core menu. Uh, so there's one set of measures for all stages called modified stage two. And the overall goal is to really improve patient outcomes and health information exchange. 